Pro tip. If you ever come across a seemingly immortal creature that can turn solid iron into powder, maybe don't try to capture it. Let's get to it, shall we? Will you stop the clatter, you bubble-headed booby? Hit me. The Outer Limits. In a South American dictatorship, marine biologist Tom Evans finds his company bought by uber-wealthy entrepreneur and all-around terrible human being John Dexter. While out on a scuba diving expedition in the nation's volcanic lake to study some fancy new underwater camera equipment, Dexter spots a bizarre creature that Evans dismisses as a harmless lungfish. Linda. What a magical lady. While Dexter goes into the water by himself in search of the creature, Evans familiarizes himself with Dexter's assistant, Lynn Arthur, a former magazine writer who wrote an exposé about Dexter being awful, only to find her magazine gobbled up by his enormous fortune and then shut down. As punishment for writing bad things about him, Dexter hired the newly unemployed Lynn to basically live it up in South America and occasionally do some light secretarial work on the two or three days a year he bothers to visit. Naturally, she resents this treatment and isn't shy about letting Dexter know it. Their whole relationship is really bizarre, and I genuinely don't understand it. She hates Dexter, but is also in love with him, and he treats her like total garbage, but leaves her in charge of his local finances and business dealings. Meanwhile, she flirts endlessly with Evans and even sticks up for him when Dexter later badmouths him. Jumping ahead a bit, the episode ends with Dexter and Lynn running off happily ever after together, so I don't know what the heck to make of any of it. I guess she just really likes horrible men who wreck whole nations and are indirectly responsible for hundreds if not thousands of deaths? Getting back to earlier, though, Dexter and Lynn go to a party being held by the country's leader, General Mercurio, but Dexter makes it a point to dress like a Silicon Valley executive and show off how bored he is by the whole thing. The General wants Dexter's help in boosting his nation's tourism industry, but Dexter blows him off before catching a glimpse of a statue of the very same fish creature he glimpsed earlier in the day. When he asks what it is, he's told it's an old god of some sort. Naturally, this makes him want to go kill it first thing in the morning. His name is Dexter, so of course he's a murderous psychopath. The following morning, Dexter, Lynn, and Evans return to the lake to go hunting. Dexter and Evans find the beast underwater, at which point Dexter shoots it with a spear and goes to stab it to death with his dive knife. Evans, understandably, wants nothing to do with this insanity, and he returns to the boat, assuming Dexter must have perished. But then Dexter emerges from the water with the body of the creature, which they quickly transport to Evans's research lab. While Evans and his colleague, Professor Aravello, begin a prepared speech about the wonders of evolution to hype up the creature before showing it to the press, the general barges in, interrupts that educational nonsense, and demands to see what they've killed. Apparently unconcerned about the fact that it looks exactly like that statue of an old god he has at his estate, the general is thrilled by the find and announces his plans to make it a tourist attraction. They keep the creature's body frozen, thinking it's dead, and then have a single guard placed in front of it overnight to make sure Dexter doesn't come try to take it to the States for further study. Then, just like the thing from another world, the guard can't help but thaw it out, at which point it inevitably escapes by smashing the iron door in its way, only to be recaptured by a flimsy net. With the creature now in a tank, the scientists set up a two-way radio to the lake so that it can communicate with others of its species. Science! Naturally, this leads to the creatures forming a posse to rescue their comrade, as well as destroy the dam powering the little nation for good measure. With the capital in ruins and the general now dead, Dexter, rather than facing any consequences whatsoever for his actions, I kind of skimmed over the part where this is still mostly his fault, but trust me, it is, gets to wash his hands of the whole affair and go off to Rome with Lynn, leaving Evans behind to pick up the pieces. I actually enjoyed this episode a lot. While the guy in the goofy-looking costume does take some getting used to, it's far from the worst we've seen from this show so far and the episode gets ambitious enough to show several of them in frame at the same time. 
There's also a lot of surprisingly good underwater work, and since the creature needs to be amphibious, I'm willing to forgive a little silliness in its design. Besides, by the time it escapes from the freezer, it is kind of frightening. The whole thing winds up feeling like Creature from the Black Lagoon by way of Lovecraft and Tropico, and there's no way I could do anything but love that. Still, the theme seems half-baked, with nothing ever showing us that the General is an evil dictator, and with his impact on the plot surprisingly minimal by the end. There's also a lack of a real protagonist, with Evans being the closest we get to one, though his character isn't fully developed either. As for Lynn, I couldn't even begin to understand or relate to her character. By the time the closing narration tells us what to think about what we just watched, it feels like it was written for a completely different episode. Anyway, that's all I have on Tourist Attraction. Now, as always, do all those youtube -y things and check out my Patreon and all that other good stuff. But until next time, this is the Unapologetic Geek telling you to never be ashamed of what you love, as long as you're not hurting anybody. I did these things for my people. Do you believe that? If you say so.